Hello, my name is Chris Roberts. I'm the host of The Long Show. I'm here with... Frank Hoffman. And this will be the second um, portion of The Bald is Beautiful. And so could you tell us what your involvement with The Bald is Beautiful program? Yeah, I was the project manager, Chris. Uh, I've worked on it now. This is the second year. And my responsibility really was setting up the uh, Bald is Beautiful website. It's a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising uh, website where people can come in and sign up. Uh, in this case, have their heads shaved <laughs> like you did. Yeah. Uh, well, it's growing and back a little bit. It's growing back. It looks great. Uh, or they could uh, choose not to have their head shaved and simply raise money. And so it had an online uh, giving uh, function as well as a way for you to send out emails. And it was really, it was fabulous. I, I worked with the people from the cancer center, the Kingsbury Cancer Center, and um, people signed up and and did a great job. We had 82 people participate. Uh, 76 of those people <laughs> came in for the shave or the close haircut. And uh, at, that was my involvement. I really uh, took care of all of the giving and the money part of it uh, coming in from that day. And then people, as they raised funds, would bring checks and cash over to the hospital in order to put it in into the account. So... The, um, the past two years, it was held downtown in Mitch Greenwall, right. and you'd see people walking around and just watching the people get their head shaved in, in the big windows. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to bring it to the, um, the hospital? Well, I think that the mm -hmm. idea was to really show uh, the community that there is a first-rate cancer facility in Keene at Cheshire Medical Center, Dartmouth-Hitchcock-Keene. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's kind of tucked away. It's in the back of the uh, hospital. So we wanted to bring attention to that center and to show people uh, that it has quite a few things for the treatment of cancer, but it also uh, it connects to the hospital. It's a very vital part of it, and it's also affiliated with the Norris Cotton Cancer Center at Dartmouth-Hitchcock-Keene. So that was the main reason. I think we had great time. Uh, Mitch was a great host. Uh, people would stop by, as you say, but having the uh, radio station there and doing a remote, I think people showed up. In fact, I welcomed one family of three who came in. They were not on the list for scheduled haircuts, but all three of them came in. They'd heard it on the radio and they decided all three of the members of the family would do a head shaving that day, which was kind of interesting. You know, instead of walking in from the street, they're hearing it on the radio and, and driving over to the cancer center. So that was the main reason and uh, you walked around and got the tour as well, and uh, you got to see some of the equipment and also hear uh, really how vital it is uh, for the hospital and for the community to have the center right here in town. And later on in part of the show, we're going to show the tour of the, of the cancer center, the cancer treatment. But that really amazed me. I didn't realize how, in, how impressive it was. And you're right. I don't think very many people thought about cancer treatment in Keene? I don't think so. I, I think that uh, the directors and uh, the leaders there at the center thought it was a great idea as well as the administration <clears throat> of the hospital because we had ample parking, uh, no problem about getting a parking ticket. Uh, you were able to find a spot, bring your family along and come right into the, the second floor of the cancer center. So it really worked out. Well, um, I have to admit when you don't have any hair, you get it. the raindrops on your head feel quite differently. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, you know, it is growing back in, Chris. Yeah. It's going to come back in. Uh, I think it was pretty exciting to see the wide range of ages there. Uh, we, we've had uh, Casey Durth is his name. He was on, on this program yeah. before. Uh, he reached his goal and surpassed it. Um, we had, uh, as our top fundraiser, Gene Cuomo from Fitzwilliam, New Hampshire, uh, Kelly Robichaud, who I think you met in yep. my office, and uh, then Raquel <laughs> Schmidt. And those were our top three individuals. And Franz of Keene put up a team. Uh, they were our, our top team mm -hmm. raising money. And it, it's a fantastic community event where people pull their energies together. So as of today... Uh, May 23rd, it's $40,766. So it's, it's over the goal we had uh, set for last year. We raised 34000 last year. 
So this year, $40,000 is, is a nice round number. And to have that many people participating, it really shows that the momentum grows for this event. Uh, there are other cancer awareness mm -hmm. and, and fundraising events in the community. But this one is a little bit unique uh, because you do have to kind of make a bit of a sacrifice. And when you do, I think that a lot of people realize what it might be like to have chemotherapy, may lose your hair. And um, I think that we've had a lot of volunteers, cancer survivors, and they've showed up for the event. There's something special about it. And <clears throat> I always, you know, you talk about sacrifice. I always kind of look at sacrifice a little different way that it's something that yeah, you're, you're forced to do, not something that you don't want to do. And what still impresses me is, is those two young girls who went and had the hit. Right. And I don't view it as a sacrifice. I view, they were pretty courageous, especially nowadays with peer pressure. To, that one girl, she had about 24, 25 inches of hair and have it all shaven off to leave school on Friday and come back Monday <clears throat> with no hair. That, that's pretty courageous. Yeah, yeah, I think it is too. <clears throat> I, I really liked uh, those two girls because they <clears throat> made their own little t-shirts, they had their own campaign, <clears throat> they formed a team and uh, they put it together. But like you say, <clears throat> when they get back to school last Monday, I'm sure that people were looking and maybe teasing them, but they were <clears throat> courageous and they went forward and the, most of their family was there that day. It was really great. And the, the big part that I don't think a lot of people realize, because those two young ladies, I call them ladies, shaved their head off, the hair off, there's going to be a number of young girls who will now have hair mm -hmm. with, with the wigs that That's are right. made. Right. With the locks of love, uh, I believe it was 10 inches. Uh, and what the, uh, the people at MJD Hair Designs would do that day uh, would braid it and then they would cut it and use that for, for wigs. Also, that's through the locks of love. But I think the Pantene company, manufacturers of hair care products, uh, also have a program to make wigs. And for some of the people that day who had a tint in their hair or had some hair dye, uh, they didn't have to not give the hairs a donation. So Pantene helped out with that. But yeah, I, I was pretty impressed with some of the things that were going on there. And, uh, you know, I just want to say, Chris, I'd just like to thank the sponsors who stepped yes. up and helped us from the community, uh, the Fenton Family Dealerships and the Savings Bank of Walpole. And uh, CVS Pharmacy did a lot. They took the before and after pictures that day, and they're available for the participants. Mm -hmm. And Little Stitches provided T-shirts for the volunteers. Uh, we also had uh, MJD Hair Design, of course, with uh, seven or eight of their hair cutters that day. So a big thanks to them, because without it, it, it wouldn't have happened. The... Um I've lived in a, a lot of places, but one of the things that really impressed me about Keene is the ability of the people and companies and organizations. They're really com community-minded. They get involved. Mm -hmm. And I think that plays a really important role in the quality of our community. Yeah, it really does. And I, I think for us, we, we kind of got a slow start in trying to partner with some of the sponsors in town. But in the long run, I think that the third year, the fourth year, it's just going to get better. Uh, more people are aware of it. Um, we used Facebook for the first time to try to spread the word about the event, and that worked really well. Uh, we had some advertising in the papers, and that was very good to bring people in. And I think it's great that people will sign up and they know they're not going to have their head shaved, but they still feel that they would like to raise money in the memory of someone or just for the, the event, a general donation. So we had a gift from London come in. We had one from uh, uh, the Southwest, and those were kind of the two furthest <laughs> away. Uh, but with the Internet and being able to send out emails to your relatives all over the world, People can get, just get online and make a gift, and that's what they did. It was really, really fantastic that way. One of the things that um, worry a lot of potential donors is where the money goes. Sometimes the Heart Association or the National Cancer Association, sometimes the money goes to national, and people want to go, I'd like to really donate 
but I want to donate that's going to have an effect on the local community. How does this money help the, the local community? Well, it does stay <clears throat> right in Keene. It benefits patients who are having treatment at the Kingsbury Cancer Center. Uh, that is one of we don't ship the money away so that people who are out there raising the funds and bringing it into the office to get processed, they know that it's going to the patient relief fund. And it really benefits patients. Uh, it's for times when, uh, you know, there's a lot of hardship involved. If you have treatment, uh, you might lose your job. You may not be able to drive. And so to have it this close in your own community, but knowing that this money stays here, it does not go to DHMC in Lebanon. It stays right at this hospital, the Cheshire Medical Center in Keene. So uh, it is, it's a local effort, but the money stays right here and does some really some great things for people who really need it. And for, we were talking about some of the people that, that cancer treatment, it's five, six, seven, eight, ten weeks. And in quote, in theory, you're not supposed to be able to lose your job. But if you can't work for ten weeks, you can't pay your rent or you can't pay your utilities. Or for some, I think they were talking about, didn't even have gas money to make the treatments. But you guys were helping them out. Yeah, and, and it's a way that the patient would uh, talk to the director, Jen Michelson, and uh, make a form, fill out a form, and talk about their need. And then these funds are readily available for them to use. So it's a matter of applying for it if you really need it. And uh, usually the, the money is put forward or uh, a gas card is purchased and given to the individual to use if they can't pay for gas or, or need a ride. Uh, I've also heard of cab fares being paid and transportation for people to get back and forth to the cancer center. The, again, when we're having the head sh cutting, the head shaving, there seemed to be a number of people who had been helped out by your organization and they wanted to pay it forward or <clears throat> pay it back. It says, I really needed it. You helped me out. I've recovered. Now I want to come back and help. Yeah, and you know, this year, Chris, there were uh, really quite a few people who had not done it the first or second year. Now, in its third year, these are people who, for one reason or another, discovered the event and decided that this was their year to do it. And some people take a year off in between uh, just to let their hair grow back. <laughs> so next year, I don't know what you're going to do, but you'll probably have it grown back in. But uh, I think that people take breaks sometimes just for personal reasons. But uh, there were a lot of people, some employees at the hospital as well. The doctor, the emergency room doctor? Yeah, and it was, it, it was really great. Yeah, we, had, we talked to him, you and I together yeah. too. And... Uh, you know, cancer touches so many people's lives. Uh, we had a question on the website about if, uh, when you signed up, if you were a cancer survivor or if, if cancer had touched your family in, in some way. And for the most part, I would say 95% of those who responded to the questions, their family, a friend, or a relative had been touched by cancer. So it's a disease that we hope to beat and uh, I think awareness is, is something that will really help do that. The, um, we got about a minute and a half left, but one of the things to me, and I think one of the nurses, it was really a quite emotional event. There was times that we had to turn away so we weren't crying or whatever, but there was one family that I still remember. The, ge the gentleman was talking about how he lost his brother three years ago, but the whole family was involved. You can't buy that. That is so much better than writing a check for $100. Mm -hmm. These people not only raised money, but they gave their heart and soul for this. They really did, and I, I know that uh, I saw quite a few people who became emotional, to, and even when they were sitting in the chair, all of a sudden they might be thinking of that loved one that they were remembering at that time, and the tears would come out, and. Quickly they would go away, but there were those moments that this sort of uh, act that they were doing in their memory of their loved one, it really showed through. And, you know, it isn't always people's pocketbooks that talk. It's sometimes that emotional uh, display as well. So overall, it was, it was just a great, a great day, and I'm really glad that you could come. Thank you, Frank. I want to thank you for, for being here. I appreciated the opportunity 
to lose all my hair. And so we're going to go to the, um, the clips, and I think the people will enjoy them, and I think they'll pass on a lot of knowledge. And so I'll see you again next year. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> I think he signed it away. I signed some meals today. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> They said it comes back really quick. <laughs> Not my first time being bald. So that would be I know. <laughs> you got the old straight edge out for him, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I used to go over to your pool. <laughs> well, you didn't drown, so. True. You must have peed in the pool when she's upset. Well, I didn't tell well. anybody about that. <laughs> <laughs> she probably did too, so. <laughs> right. Uh, she's not saying no, no. <laughs> I'm not saying no to that one. <laughs> but she's not on camera, you are. <laughs> we can change that. Though. Yeah, we can change that. Right, right. Film at 11. Yeah. Right. <laughs> She still can't understand what's going on. Where's mommy's hair? Yeah, Where's the hair? Where'd the hair all go, huh? Where's mommy's hair, huh? Where's mommy's hair? I know they had hair when we grew up and woke up this morning. Right. Where's mommy's hair? I wonder if they do layups. Yeah, you want to see my legs? I like them on my own. I like them on my own. I like them on my own. First time, second time? First time. We've been growing it for more than a year. I don't know how long exactly. Heard the possibility you've been trying to get to be one of the top fundraisers? No, I was one of the first ones, but not the top one. So you get any of your friends to donate? No, I don't think so. Maybe I'll leave the way next year. Well, they can still donate now. They still got a couple more weeks to oh, donate. Yeah. Oh, no, they donated. A lot of my friends donated. They just did. They're not participating in getting their hair cut. Oh, yeah, no, I got a lot of small donations. Doesn't matter how big, they're all valuable. Yep. They add up. <clears throat> kind of like that Jackie Chan movie where they, uh, Shanghai, was it Shanghai Cowboy? <laughs> That Owens guy and him were. Do you want to take pictures with that? Yeah. Okay, sure. You're so popular. Yeah. Everybody's paying attention to me. Yeah. <laughs> Now you can say I've had enough of you guys, you've been pulling my hair out over you guys. <laughs> <laughs> 
there's a uh, size I'm going to itch when I grow out. Oh, I won't itch. I don't know. <laughs> I'll just next year. I'll let you know next year, okay? Okay. No, 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 get it done. Yeah, I'm going to have to get the guy's new that. Yeah, I'm going to have to get the guy's new that. Not bad at all. Looking pretty good. And you, you're one of those guys who get the shine right off the top. You don't have to worry about it. Next year. I shaved my head before. My, all my boys did it for football. Yeah. The whole team did it. And all the fathers. The trick is to fold it while it's still on the table. Can I get your email? Yeah, it's all it's not really that bad for guys to do it, but I don't know about some of the women. You, know, you guys are really taking a big jump. Could be worse. That's right. Well, if you can get back, I look at it as a fresh start. The unfortunate part. There's people with cancer in the grave with a full head of hair, and they would much rather be bald than alive. Yeah. Yes. I lost uh, my stepfather with he had colon cancer, and then my best friend Bunny had breast cancer. Okay, you can head right over to one of the stations to the left, and they'll get you shaved down. At least nowadays, it's not a death sentence. Right. We should have survived. Bye. <laughs> And it's, it's a little different. There's so many different ways. Some people walk, some people ride a bike. But it's done and over with. But when, you, when you're shaving your hair, it's going to be there for a while. People know that you went out there. I don't know. She's being kind of mean. She's just taking her time instead of just doing. I had a lot of hair. Very yeah. thick hair. I don't have any. <laughs> no, you still got some. You got half a head of hair. Don't change your mind and have it stop. You'd be like a Mohican. <laughs> yeah, we'll just leave that. Yeah. <laughs> My kids on the bus would think that would be cool. Okay? Yeah, we got the coolest bus driver around. <laughs> I have good kids. We have hair cutters over there. You guys just don't look the same you did 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Who's going to be less Luthor? Who's going to be less Luthor from Batman? He's gotten pretty close. It was it Gene Hackman? I think played like Luthor in Batman. Is this this group? Is this part of a team? Their team, the Brattleboro Baldies. It's Tony. Tony. And is, are you on the team, Diane? Yes. And Pierre are all okay. Yeah. 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 So you drove all the way down to Brattleboro to get your hair cut and keen. It's really not that far. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to shave it afterwards? And absolutely. That's just because someone turned the air conditioner on.
Are these your real friends? They seem to be smiling pretty happy. We love it. Leave it just like that. Instead of the red of the rubber. Little color, little moose, little spike. And I do it. Okay. Thanks. Tomorrow, I'm gonna look over. Just you can sleep in after you're late. Sorry. Okay. Send you over to one of the other stations down there on the left. It's paid a lot of money for all this color. <laughs> bad at all, right? It was like when I got ready to quit smoke and I psyched myself. Oh, people messing with you. Okay. You guys been really Yeah. Oh, my God. Actually, There's always a wise guy in every group. When I work with her again next week, she says, do you think I really hurt that person? Thank you. You're Don't you have some um, hydrogen peroxide to wash to make sure there's no infections? <laughs> give, them, give them reasons to yell. <laughs> Not that bad. You don't think so? Nah. <laughs> think of all the money you're going to save in shampoo, right? That's true. I feel like you just buy new hats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to the dryer. Right, I'm telling you, this is like the best excuse to shave your head for the summertime. I guess so. All right, and your sister's done it three years now, so come on. You don't have a beard. I don't have a beard. That would be awkward. <laughs> You know, she's right. This is a perfect excuse to shave your head without any. And if anybody thinks you're, yeah, you come across as cool because you're helping somebody. You shave your head for you, an idiot? No, I'm doing to help out. I'm that's, saving lives. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. I <laughs> shave my hair to make better life. Yeah, just flip the switch. Yeah, you, you know, flip you know the switch. Get it. What did you do? Exactly. It's like, hey, what bud, you when you're yeah. yeah. Why don't you cut your hair yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, when you get that spike, then you get the triple dye. Yeah. What did you do that for? <laughs> I did, I made something. <laughs> You have about 15 inches long? I don't know. 20 inches long? It won't hurt. Well, physically, it won't hurt. Like, do it right as you get out of the 
get a shower. Okay. You can head right over to one of the stations over there. You can leave that on. Gonna make some kid really happy. She's good with the sit. She's good. She's she's not gonna hurt you. <laughs> Frank, so we're at the Kingsbury, the official name, Kingsbury Cancer Pavilion, and we all know that cancer is quite stressful and stuff. And this seems kind of like a, a mellow um, room. Yeah, yeah, I think that that was the idea to do that. Do you? Uh, so this, the sculpture, it just seems so relaxing, and it, yeah. and you have the quilts that the um, people are selling right here. Yeah. You put patches, put 
names of loved ones on here. Well, it's been very busy. And then it'll be uh, made into a quilt that'll hang here. Okay. Kind of like some of the places have the AIDS quilt where mm -hmm. family members can get them yep. out. <laughs> and this is the bottom of that bottom sculpture. sculpture. Kind of a and kind of serenity, flower of life. You can still rebuild it. Cali little sense. It's nice. And their property and their resources to start it in 1991. So they gave the, the homestead and land to the community mm -hmm. hospital in 1991. Yeah. Uh, it's the James Ewing Library. It was also donated in the memory of James Ewing. And uh, there's videos uh, you can get online, do things, research too if you'd like to. Uh, I think it's used for the staff as well as for patients. Yeah, because a lot of times when you find out that you have cancer, it's so overwhelming, you want no information, sometimes you have to make some quick decisions and how do you make a decision if you're not informed. Right. Yeah. So anybody who has cancer, their family member, they can come in here and try to get as much information as possible right. before they have to make some difficult decisions? Mm -hmm. Definitely, and, uh, and because the stuff's online, but there's also books and videos, it's, it's just a great resource. <laughs> and it's, it's quiet in here, too. It's just a very sort of peaceful environment. And so, plus if, if I had something and someone else was in here, it kind of like, you could comm commiserate, that's not the right word, but you could sit down and talk yeah. to someone else that's kind of like in the same situation. Right. If they felt like they wanted to do that, uh, mm -hmm. I think that they'd, they'd be open to, I think I've... I've an oncologist. Yep. He's been with this facility over 20 years, trained at Mass General. His father trained at Mass General, second generation radiation oncologist. Um, when people come in with a cancer diagnosis to receive radiation treatment, they're referred from their surgeons, their medical oncologist, which is also their chemotherapy doctor, or from their general practitioner. Dr. Levine speaks with them in consultation well over an hour, and they both agree that radiation is something they need to, it needs to be pursued. We can go ahead and start the planning that same day. First part of the planning is a CAT scan. First, we'll change into a gown, the appropriate area. And we'll come into this room and have a CAT scan. This is a Philips Big Bore CT scan. It's called Big Bore because it has the widest aperture available to slide in and out for patient comfort, especially if you're a little bit claustrophobic. The machine's about three years old. We have a special tabletop. Um, the machine takes data and images sort of like slices of a slice of bread. All the, all the data is digitally produced and put through a computer system to a planning system where the dosimetrist mm -hmm. and the medical physicist along with Dr. Levine come up with a plan for the radiation therapy for the patient. Usually encompassing the tumor or where the tumor was and the margin of tissue surrounding. And after all that information is completed, a plan is generated, and the plan needs to be checked on the patient on the actual treatment room. The, um, <clears throat> I had prostate cancer, and, it would, and I failed all the margins, and he said, well, you know what, you're probably going to have to have radiation. Mm -hmm. But I was up at the VA, and the VA goes and says, wait, wait a minute, you got health insurance, and you live right down in Keene, and Keene has a really good one. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, I just couldn't picture having to go five days a week for seven weeks all the way up to White River Junction and back. Mm -hmm. My wife wouldn't have been able to wear, mm -hmm. if, I wouldn't be able to drive myself back and forth. Mm -hmm. and so you got a good reputation for having a right. quality place. Uh, last year, we treated 8,500 patients, 8,500 procedures so on our treatment machine, a total of 433 patients. Uh, we feed from 49 communities in New Hampshire about six communities in Massachusetts and 19 communities in Vermont. 
So we do serve the region. The next closest radiation therapy center is an hour and a half north or an hour and a half east. And what do you do during the winter? Um, you miss it? Um, no, we no. don't want you to risk Here. life or limb. Here. If you're uh, if you lived on Court Street, the road to the hospital is always cleared first, Here. so you can usually make it in. Um, if you have to miss a day, you have to miss a day. We'd rather you not lose life or limb just for radiation. Okay. Here, and the imagery comes right into those. Comes two here. Doctor Le Levine reviews the CAT scan immediately after as it's being done. And then the data is pushed into the pinnacle treatment planning system that we have that um, connects onto our Varian radiation therapy treatment delivery system. It's about seven years old. We need a new one. The repair guy was here last night. Um, it has two photon energies, five electron energies, and it's capable of going 360 degrees around. The table also pivots off 90 degrees in both directions. When you say 360, is that what spins? Is this up here? Well, this part, is, this, this this part spins. Oh my god. That goodness. part spins. There's wedges that modify the beam as well. And this part spins. <laughs> almost sound like you're on Star Trek with protons and neutrons and accelerators. Well, yeah, yeah. that's that. He was, Ray Bradbury had some going yeah, on. Yeah. <clears throat> so okay. that would be the patient's step. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we used, uh, in order to treat the head and neck area, we make special custom masks. And they're made out of uh, a low temp melting point plastic. It enables us to put pa marks upon the patient without actually having the stigma of having the marks on their face during treatment. It also holds them very securely in position. Our treatment parameters are plus or minus two millimeters. And Dr. Levine is very exacting. Plus or minus two millimeters. Two millimeters, two, yeah. 2.54 centimeters to an inch. Right. Two so millimeters is with one. Air. So yeah, so that's one two hundred and fifty. That isn't much room. <laughs> and the light lasers that we initially put the marks on in the planning room align up with the light lasers in this room. And uh, digital scale projects from the head of the machine, which gives us numbers that we read to set up. There are 144 leaves in the head of the machine that slide in and out and shape circular or spherical type fields as opposed to standard rectangles and squares. How, does long, how long do some of these procedures last? Um, some procedures are very quick, like treating both sides of a head can be as quick as three minutes and up to 20 minutes for the IMRT, which is the Intensity Modulated Radiation Therapy. 20 minutes is an awful long time. 20 minutes is an awful long time on that mean hard table. And because of all the radiation, you're, you're here by yourself, right? You're on the table by yourself, there's cameras, and there's also an audio system. And if ever there should be a need, we can shut off the machine <coughs> immediately, come right in, put you off the table. But all this other, the building the two, it's also to protect the, the doctors and the workers from the radiation. Right, and we also are badged as well with dosimeters. It's always one of those, you, you use something deadly to kill something deadly to benefit you. So you having fun today? Oh, wonderful. You're going to shave it all off, huh? Yep. Second year in a row. Second year? Yeah. So how much did it grow back from last year about? What was there? 
about that much. Hey, three to five. <laughs> That's going to take me a couple years just to grow that much. So I'm not the only one who's done that. I've had to use two. We had to double up on I can just tell people. I have, my hair is fine, but I have a lot of it. Yep. So how many are going to shave? Uh, one, two, two, three, four. For the little one. Okay. <laughs> awesome, thank you. <laughs> but it's a whole family group? Yeah. Um, I'm adopted. Okay. <laughs> yes, they're all family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kat, one that's like a wanted poster. <laughs> <laughs> Which so, one did it? <laughs> so what, We're not telling. It was her. It was Number 67, please <laughs> step forward. <laughs> so what convinced you guys to come on out? So while you're here, can we put a uh, name to the numbers? Jeff. Jeff. Penny. Penny. Jasmine. Jasmine. Macy. What is it? Macy. Macy. And Brad. Okay. What about the one that's not going to shave her hair? Jolie. 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 Okay. And so after you get done shaving your hair, leave your name with Frank and we'll give you a DVD of this. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Coming off real quick. <laughs> they haven't started yet. I can uh, change my mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeffrey He's cheated though. He was half yeah, you can already. change your mind after you got him now. <laughs> oh, wait, I like this look. <laughs> oh, that is a good look there. Yeah. Halfway. Yeah. Ultimate fake out. You get him to do his hair, then you say, change my mind. Gonna make some little girl happy. <laughs> the kids have been having a hard time when mom and dad all of a sudden went bald. Yeah. Uh, she's a mom. Where are the grandparents? I've never seen you bald before. <laughs> They said you can crazy glue anything, right? <laughs> What was that um, Chris Rock's movie? Some of the women pay five, six thousand dollars just to braid yeah, the hair back. <laughs> Get the wheat, huh? Yeah.
Maisie, do you still want to do it? Jesse's turn. Yeah, we just Sissy, it's your that. turn. We haven't done it recently, but yeah. I'm going yeah. next. Yeah. 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 Share it with you on a whole. Do you, do you want to go to Mimi? Yeah. Yeah. Jesse, your turn. <laughs> I'm going. Are you going to do it, Mies? You don't have to. It's up to you. You don't have to. Yeah. You can keep your hair. It's going to be more fun painting. Yeah, you'll have more fun painting than having to explain Yep. Go ahead. The other half I shaved. Can you still keep a hat? Well, those hats are for a person. So that is how we have. So that is, it takes longer for their hair to do it. Don't have to get up and wash it in the morning. Nope. Oh, it was just like I caught 15 minutes out of getting ready. So so she's doing really good, actually. Oh, here goes my bangs. Where did yeah. Papa go? Where did Papa go? He's over there. I tried to convince my wife so I can get in the bathroom <laughs> earlier. <laughs> <laughs> No selfish motive. You know, we should we should target it people with one bathroom. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to see this on your show, right? You know how like, you always put things together? Why did my daughter do that? And Emily... You'll be able to get a DVD of it, too. You guys do very good. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 This, this is public interest stuff. This is what people want to see. Yeah, but I mean, I like your straight talk. You guys are real good with King. You put it where it goes. <laughs> talking to Mitch about all this beautiful, and Jim was like, you know, and I didn't even know that this is a green wall, I don't know why, you know, he's like, you know, don't it, you know, <laughs> but this, this is green wall, but, you know, the math counts coach, and that's what you're like, oh my god. It's so always best to do it in so summer. If you don't like it, you just wear a hat, right? I started talking to my math teacher. That's a bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys are starting to look like twins. You guys are starting to look like twins. Because I already had half of it gone. That's a strong point. And then she joined this club. You, all three of you are going to be done before we really start. All right, well, you're all set. We'll see you later. Yeah, just Yay! see you. <laughs> <laughs> Let it go home and finish, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you're next, right? Yeah, absolutely. And then heaven will have you. That's a good, that's, that's probably a good idea. You don't have to. <laughs> I, um, I heard you live. I, I, and I watched Steve, so I'll start with Yeah. Come and quick. Come and quick. It's going to make you look 10 years younger, no more gray. Oh, good. That's a bargain. Brother Danny. 
passed away two years ago from stomach cancer. He had a long struggle, and I miss him very much. I know it's a good thing, but it's hard. Right here. Do you mind me having a start here? Thank you. No, thank you. It's raining outside, you'd be able to notice it quicker. Yeah, I We were at I think you were at four sixty five. Four eighty five now. Four eighty five. Oh Brad, we covered up your picture. Oh somebody else said that. Oh you did. I like your number. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks. Back now. 